Okay. Um, I'm going to go over a feature in SAS called uh, at extend. Um, I believe um, it may also be referred to as inheritance, but basically that is what it's ha is happening. Uh, using extend through SAS, you're able to share a set of CSS properties um, when from one selector to another. So the purpose of utilizing something like this is to um, is to reduce the amount of code bloat and to kind of uh, create a more reusable and streamlined process for when you are designing um, uh, components or elements that will be reused uh, th throughout, um, you know, throughout a page or a product. So uh, if you look at this, uh, this page here, um, there are several buttons with different kinds of stylings that you can see. We have a very colorful kind of call to action here, which uh, definitely um, would be considered a primary button and has more hierarchy than, you know, a button like this and and even a button like this. Um, so instead of uh, writing all these styles again and again, um, uh, what we can do is use um, the extend feature. So um, here in uh, my SCSS, I have um, properties built out for the for the basic button style. So this is the only place where you have to write out uh, the properties like background color, font size, you know, um, the family, even like padding everything. Um, you want to reserve uh, the properties that are more basic here that you know would kind of be carried over from one button to another. Um, because what you'll basically be doing is extending this, um, extending this style to another button and then either adding to or overriding uh, properties to create a variant of that type. Um, so as you can see here, there's even hover focus states. There's even um, a media query built out um, for how this uh, should look on mobile. We want it to extend fully. Um, then we have a uh, kind of differentiation here um, pulled from this basic button style. Uh, we have a major button and a minor button. Um, and of course you can write as many as you want and it, you can use whatever naming conventions make sense. Um, you know, if you wanna have a call to action button, if you wanna have a primary, secondary, if you wanna have, um, you know, like a uh, link buttons, um, and, uh, whatever makes sense. Uh, but for this example, I have just major and minor buttons. So I'm taking those styles that I showed you and uh, the only thing that's changing here um, are is really like um, background color and border color. So um, you'll be able to see um, that I'm applying uh, the major button style and the minor button style. Now you see I'm passing them through to any button that I have in my HTML that I've given a class of call to action button or call to action button two. And again, like these are just the names that I chose for it. Um, but so if you look here um, and you inspect uh, this primary button here, I've given it a class of call to action button and I have extended uh, the major button uh, style to it. So all I had to do was really just pass that through and it, it, it took those styles. Um, and then here um, in this section and also in the footer, because I felt that those were like, um, you know, less significant, more of a secondary type of button, I have uh, given them the class of CTA button two, and it's passing through um, the uh, the minor button styles that I showed you above. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a very powerful tool and it, I believe that it helps you stay more organized. And again, like it reduces bloat and, uh, I could have used it, uh, for a text link here as kind of like a tertiary, uh, button style, um, you know, even in the email here. Um, so it, it's just a very, uh, it's a great way to start thinking about how you want to break down buttons, especially when you're beginning with a design style guide or an element style guide, where you're kind of breaking down all the different variants, um, you know, like in Figma or, or Adobe programs.